New Mexico is not doing well when it comes to controlling COVID. The much cited seven day average case count is more than double what the state says it needs to be if New Mexico plans to keep businesses and schools running and open. Here to discuss is the line opinion panel. We welcome line regular and principal of the Garrity Group, Tom Garrity. Now the line regular former state Senator Aditi Feldman also joins us via Zoom. And rounding out our table is line guest Steve Terrell, former reporter for the Santa Fe New Mexican, also via Zoom from Santa Fe. All right, guys, the governor announced this week that she's made changes to the public health order. Let's start here. Tom, a 10 p.m. closing time for any restaurant serving alcohol. The governor has finally found a restriction that restaurant association is behind. What works with this? How does this all work? Is this going to be okay? Yeah, well, it's a it's a step, right? Mm -hmm. You know, right? You know, the governor's office has uh, even admitted uh, through their spokesperson that no, that they don't really know what is causing this latest uptick. They can't trace it back to a specific event. Right. Um, but you know, I think that the ten o'clock time is a, is is good because it helps to engage the small business, the restaurants, uh, as a part of the solution. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the media coverage that I've been reading has been very favorable of it. So, uh, and it sounds pretty reasonable too as far as, you know, it's some will say it's a quasi curfew, but, um, you know, I would say, you know what, it's, it's a good, happy medium. You know, you can serve alcohol until 10 o'clock, uh, you know, and, and it addresses that. You know, I think that the larger communication issues at play, though, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's just so much confusion out there. So I think that the more that the governor's office uh, and other entities can really reinforce what is uh, what is and isn't allowed under the different public health orders, I think is great. For example, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have uh, houses of worship are open, but you can't have gatherings of five or you know, uh, no more than five people in, in a house. Uh, so that's a bit of a conflict. Um, another conflict could be, um, you know, the uh, university basketball is exempt. So, you can, you know, they can travel and play games in state and out of state, but New Mexico United can't. Right. So you just have a lot of these, you know, unique rules that you know, basically confuse the general public. Mm -hmm. So I think the more that the governor's office and other entities can go ahead and just really say, here's what, uh, you know, here's, here's what the rules are uh, and here's why you need to follow them uh, will be great and try and eliminate as much of these kind of these dual kind of, you know, uh, uh, sets of guidelines, mm -hmm. I think would be very helpful. That's a legit uh, thing. I've heard that from other folks that there's a little bit of confusion still out there even after all this time. You know, Steve Terrell, you're up in uh, Santa Fe, of course, it's going to start getting colder for you guys, you know, a little bit before Albuquerque, certainly. And I'm wondering if you, it, just knowing the footprint of uh, the Santa Fe restaurant scene, the idea of winter and what's coming up for winter, how, is it going to be manageable for folks up there? Uh, I had lunch yesterday with a friend uh, at a, in the patio of a restaurant, and uh, we were talking about the, the very same thing. It's, uh, yeah, I, it's going to be hard. Um, mm -hmm. She says, well, I, I kind of like the cold better, so uh, I'll be less affected than others. And that's kind of true for me, too. But, uh, yeah, when it starts snowing and when it gets really cold, it's, it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, the 10 o'clock curfew, I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to affect Santa Fe. We, we start rolling up the sidewalks around 9 o'clock, even right. before the pandemic. But, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure if that'll have a big effect or not. Mm -hmm. One thing I read uh, in a, a CNN story actually was uh, the the head of the uh, CDC told governors yesterday that uh, he believes the main cause of this up upright or spike of uh, all these in all the states is due to uh, small gatherings. He said we're doing fairly well in the public square, but um, these small gatherings in people's houses where you think, well, yeah, this is my cousin, he's okay, uh, right. that's my neighbor, and this is my friend, you know. Um, but uh, you never know. And uh, he, he theorized, I don't know if there's data to back it up, but uh, mm -hmm. he theorized that that's what uh, is causing this uh, uprise. Mm -hmm. Didi, as we sit here taping on Thursday midday, I mean, that was a shocking number from the governor about how many cases have been reported now. 577 is just beyond the beyond when you think about where we were back in August, July, you know what I mean, where things were sort of what, what went wrong in your view? Is it traveling? Is it like Steve said, we're gathering? What, what, in your view, what's, what's gone wrong here? Well, you know, it's a combination of things, mm -hmm. of course. And, um, you know, I, 
I have to say that it, it kind of goes to the heart of human relations. If you accept the premise that it's small family gatherings that are that is ca the cause of this spike, mm -hmm. then what are you going to do? Are you going to ban Thanksgiving? Um, are you going to uh, ban uh, families getting together? That's the heart of New Mexico. Right. And I think the governor is aware of that. I think the governor is aware of that and it poses a real dilemma. Um, here's a governor that hadn't seen her own mother uh, for, for so many months mm -hmm. um, and who is under quarantine herself. And yet she can't uh, convince people to not gather in, I, I mean, I've seen lots of gatherings above 10 people mm -hmm. uh, all over the state. And uh, how do you stop that? Okay, now there's a there's a, a guideline that has to be five and less. Well, you know, I think that uh, I'm with Tom on this. There needs to be a better communication strategy given the obstacles. Mm -hmm. And she needs to be using surrogates uh, that represent various groups uh, in, in the New Mexico culture and have them express how important it is. And we certainly have the very dire circumstances and it's only gonna get worse mm -hmm. because we're now counting the new cases. We're not counting the new deaths and not counting the new hospitalizations. So um, I'm, I'm worried about it. I'm, I mean, D Governor Cuomo had daily uh, briefings uh, when things got out of hand in New York and it may be that we need more more consistent, more mm -hmm. constant messaging. I think you might be right on that. Tom, pick up on that if you would. It's, this is the art of the game, literally, how to, how to convince people to do something they may not want to be you know, crazy about doing and how one does that. Does Didi make a point about sp spreading the messaging out amongst different voices? Oh, absolutely. We need different messengers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously, you know, we there's a low level of trust of uh, of government officials. Right. Uh, so using them as the main carriers of the messages, probably not the best idea. Focus more on doctors, more on family members. Um, it, and to to Didi's point, you know, we really have to take a fresh look at how this is messaged. You know, instead mm -hmm. of saying, you know, don't meet in groups of five or smaller or five, you know, groups of five and above is, is not allowed. Um, why don't you reshape the messaging and say, here are the safe ways to meet in, you know, groups of five mm -hmm. or groups of under 10 and provide some, you know, real common sense things for people to do instead of just saying, you know, don't do it. And then everybody's going to say, Hey, well, let's get together tonight for Netflix, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the, so really kind of changing that messaging to really enable the, you know, the residents as a part of the solution instead of, uh, you know, being a culprit and somebody who's, you know, psychologically breaking the law. Right. Good points there. Got to take a quick break, break with this group to reset. When we come back, we'll look at the end of the obelisk in the Santa Fe Plaza.